and we are live. Welcome back to day two of our online conference. We're really glad you could join us again uh, to take part. If you missed yesterday, don't worry, all our videos are being saved onto YouTube straight after their broadcast, so you can go and catch them if you've missed them. Uh, today's video is actually pre-recorded, um, but please feel free to message us with any questions that you have via our social media, which you can see above. The other thing I want to mention is uh, we've got our Q&A panel on Thursday, so if you have any questions you'd like us to share uh, with Dave, who's with us today, uh, we can answer those on Thursday, or if you have any questions for any of our speakers for Thursday, feel free to message those in. Um, and one more thing before I hand over to Dave today, um, we would love to hear any testimonies or stories that you might have that you're prompted to share with us after hearing some of our talks this week. So if you have any of those, please feel free to share them with us at some point over the next couple of days. Um, so Dave Law is joining us today. Um, before I hand over to him, I'm going to just say a quick prayer. Father, thank you for this time to sit down and meet uh, again today. Thank you for Dave and the role he plays with Transform Work UK. We ask that you bless Dave with words today and we also ask again for no technical issues. Amen. OK, Dave, over to you. OK. Hi and thank you, everybody. Um, just click on to my PowerPoint. So, welcome. So, today, my name is Dave Law, and today I'm speaking on transforming the workplace, Christians and diversity. So, just to give you an introduction to myself, um, I'm lead ambassador for South East England for Transform Work UK, um, and that's our website, and I'm an analytical chemist for Thames Water. Now, as Steph said, we're pre-recording this talk, partly because I've got a three-year-old uh, daughter who might try and walk in in the middle of this, but largely also because um, as a chemist for Thames Water, I'm considered a key worker. And whilst I'm not expecting to have to work and I'm expecting to be able to answer questions on Thursday, there is a possibility I might be called in to uh, work. And therefore, both if if you have any more specific questions rather than the general ones, feel free to email me. My email's on there. And so we'll go from there. So we're looking at Christianity and diversity in the workplace. So starting off with this uh, quote uh, from Matthew. You are the salt of the earth, you are the light of the world. Let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So looking at equality, diversity, and inclusion, these are three terms that uh, are both legal, some of them partly legal, things you'll hear with a lot of talk to uh, human resources and you'll hear a lot around other parts of the business. So equality, the state being equal, especially in status, rights and opportunities. Equality is about ensuring that every individual has an equal opportunity to make the most of their lives and their talents. It's also the belief that no one should have a poorer life chance is because of the way they were born, where they came from, what they believe, or whether they have a disability. And that is from the Equality and Human Rights Commission. Diversity. The state, uh, we all as individuals bring a diverse set of energies, perspectives, work and life experience, as well as religious and cultural differences. By recognising these differences and learning to respect and value each individual, we can unlock the, and benefit from the rewards. And inclusion, the action or state of including or being included within a group or structure. Inclusion is not a one-way street, it works two ways. Organisations need to make sure that they instil an inclusive culture, facilitating people to proactively engage. Feeling included is a sense of being part of a community or organisation. So, uh, 
we talk about these and it's good in general terms, but you also specifically certain terms are protected in law. They're called protected characteristics and um, it's against the law to discriminate against these. Now, there are caveats to this for certain reasons and certain parts, but uh, for ease today, we, will, we won't go into those in in any extent. So um, age, disability, gender reassignment, marriage or civil partnership, pregnancy and maternity, race, religion or belief, sex and sexual orientation. And that's the Equality Act 2010 defines that. And obviously the key one highlighted here, which affects us most, is religion or belief. So when we're looking at diversity and equality, then the question there is, so surely where you have uh, people particularly looking at this, you're looking for groups that ex sometimes experience discrimination. And yes, in a large part, that is uh, what they are there for. But equality says that it acts both ways. You can't be e more equal than somebody else. If the minority is receiving it, the majority have got to. And the question there is, Christians aren't discriminated against, are they? Well, I suppose the statistic to look at is around 60% of the British population describes themselves as Christian, but yet only around four to five percent of the population actually attend church and when surveys have been done it's it's shown that those who uh, are who identify as christian but don't attend church in their values and their and their outlook on life are indistinguishable from the rest of the population Whereas those who do regularly attend church often are largely have largely differing views, particularly around things like um, sanctity of life um, and um, days working and various other bits and pieces like that. So we're talking about. Um, the way that these work then and the way that these fit into the wider diversity structures. So um, I'll start by introducing Transform Work UK. We are a small charity large, um, staffed predominantly by volunteers um, of people who are interested in supporting groups in the workplace. So these, we call them Christian workplace groups. Sometimes they might be called Christian unions, workplace Christian fellowships, um, God at work groups and similar. And we, as an organization, we have around 500 of these groups that we know of and another couple of hundred people who would like to set up groups like this, but um, haven't been able to at this point. So, so Christian workplace groups are part of, in many cases, a larger diversity structure. So within my workplace, Thames Water, we have um, diversity groups. So we have an active women's network. We have an active LGBT network. We have an active black and ethnic minority network. And we have an active disability network. And we have several active faith networks. And this is where the Christian group fits into this. So, we say, what is the problem? 
why do we need to worry about this one? Well, I think many Christians will go into the workplace and uh, will say will feel the pressure to keep your light hidden under a bushel. You will go and say, where are the other Christians? I'm here to do a job. Um, and if my views are at odds with the rest of the population, then I just need to shut up and get on with the job. Now, one of the things that um, there, both from an HR perspective and from a Christian perspective, is that we're not actually truly reflecting who we are here. Uh, one of the terms used quite often in HR terms is bring your whole self to work. That means every aspect of what you are about is important to you as a company, to you as an employee, and to them as a company, because it does influence how you think about problems and different perspectives that you could bring to the situation. So, and yes, um, if we as Christians truly believe that we have God's spirit working through us in our whole lives, then we cannot be authentically to ourselves if we deny that whilst we're at work. So here's a little survey that um, was done at a Christian festival a few years ago by one of my colleagues in Transform Work UK. So where do you find it hardest to live as a Christian? So here we go. Home, 4%. Understandable in some cases. Leisure, 13%. Yeah. Um, the surprising one here is church, 3%. I don't know what sort of church that goes to if they find it hard to be a Christian in their church. But 75% of the people surveyed said at work, which then goes, do you consider your work to be important to God? 88% of those surveyed said, yes, I do. And um, only 2% said no. And the rest, of them, um, not, uh, almost all the rest said, I've never really thought about that. So you can often feel isolated. I know before I joined Thames Water, my previous employer, uh, we had around 40 or 50 staff at my site. And I never obviously knew another Christian. I probably should have, because by sheer statistics, there should have been another two or three in the company. But um, here it says, However, 74% of those surveyed said, yes, they have come across another Christian in their workplace. So, OK, what do we do about this? Do you meet to pray with others in your workplace? And how often? So you can see that um, around... Uh, was it, uh, around 38% uh, have at some stage met to pray, but the key one there is 62% of the people have never met to pray with their other people in their workplace. Feels like a major missed opportunity to me. And then, so then you say, so. If you were to meet together, if you were to do things as Christians together in the workplace, what could you do? Now, some of these are fairly straightforward. Uh, food bank appeal. Now, that's quite easy. You put a sign and a box in the corner of the tea room and say, collection for food bank. Can I um, and uh, do and wait for people to put stuff in there? And your colleagues usually will. Um, Christmas carol event, again, it's quite an easy one to do, so long as you've got permission to do it. We've had quite a few places where 
you people have organized carols in the foyer of their building. Um, given that a lot of schools do it, Operation Christmas Child, the shoebox appeal, happens in quite a lot of workplaces. And a lot, very often the Christian group is the people behind it and organizing it. But one of the, the ones there that might surprise some people, um, but it's a great blessing, is Alpha in the workplace. It's not the most common thing, but it happens. And just think about it. If your colleagues, uh, you may be the only Christian they'll come across. Um, and they may they may work 20, 30 miles from you. Uh, how if they've got an interest, why not run something like Alpha in the workplace? So how do we respond to this one uh, as Transform Work UK? So what we do is we encourage people to come together in their workplaces to form Christian workplace groups. Now, this could be as simple, and quite a few of them are, of just two or three people booking a meeting room, taking over a lunchtime, taking their lunch in there, praying, opening the Bible in there. And you can go a lot further than that, but that is probably the most important thing you can do. Just pray in your workplace, pray for your workplace, and build uh, from there. Um, but what we do is we try and make sure that these groups are not just holy huddles. We want these groups to be looking outwards and saying, how can we bless the organization? Um, not how can we take this meeting room to hide away from this horrible heathen um, company we're in? We want uh, one that engages with management and very much one that says, we want to get involved in your diversity structures because we believe that as Christians, we have got a voice that can bring value to the company. And we want it to be open. We want the door, we want it to be open to anybody to come into these meetings, whether uh, from whatever strand of Christianity they are. I've had in the same meeting together from Polish Roman Catholics to Pentecostals to Seventh-day Adventists and we can all come together and we all are coming together because we have got uh, God in common and we are also want these meetings to be open that non-believers can come along because you can never know who could come along you never know what witness you could be so and here we are, have the BT Director of People and Policy. Um, BT Christian Network is the largest Christian network that we know of with well over a thousand members in it spread across the UK. So BT Director of People and Policy. I've absolutely no doubt that the Christian Network is an important element in achieving a progressive organization, one that embraces and supports change and one that believes in its people. I've seen the power of the network. In fact, I think that Christian networks are powerful resources for employers if they can reach out to them, not just for business in general, but for parliamentarians as well. So I don't believe the BT director involved was a Christian, but he's just seen how we bless the workplace. So let's say you want to start this group and I've got some links to resources which I will share at the end of this. But the first one then is think about your calling in your work organisation. Why are you there? Are you there to bring home a pay packet? Which some people are. And there's no shame in that. If all, if 
the most important thing is to be able to support yourself and your family. Um, and you don't, and in other respects, your work isn't a great fit. That's not a, no, there's no shame in that. But for many of us, you have recalled to be in your workplace. You may not be call, feel a great calling to your individual career, um, but you are called to be as good at it as you can be, to work diligently and to be a Christian witness in that workplace. So if you want to start a group, the first part obviously is to find other believers. Now, there's a good chance you will be able to see, you will come across them from talking. Uh, there is no harm in, if, you're, if you can do it, have a suitably something like a Christian calendar on your, next to your computer if you've got a desk. Um, I have got a little cross on my um, lanyard, so it's not the most um, obvious one that um, is there. And if you can do, you could even put a sign up saying you want to find other believers to form a group. It happens. And if you think there might be one, come and look at our website, transformworkuk.org. And we, if we know of one in your organisation, come along and sign up. Then, you, then the question is, know your territory. Know the place where God has put you. Are you, um, how easy is it to book a meeting room? Do you work shifts? Do you have fixed lunch breaks? Um, is there a prayer room? in your organisation? Is there a chaplain even? Uh, certainly within University of Reading, who I have some contacts with, um, the chaplain there doesn't just reach to the students, he also reaches to the staff and, or, and helps organise stuff there. And if you want to take it anywhere, you need to build a team. We're not here about a one-person crusade to convert your entire workplace on your own. The church is not a one-man organisation. We are uh, a team together. And the key one here is everything you do must be saturated in prayer. We should not be going and doing any of these things without praying about it first. So let's assume you've got a few of you together and you've um, worked out how you can do it. So then think about what benefits will the group bring to the organisation? So some of it you'll be obvious and tangible, like you can organise charity stuff for the organisation. Some of it will be uh, less obvious, um, to people outside Christian circles because you would turn around and say um, I will pray for the organisation and some of it um, as well could be um, what you might uh, share with other organisations so a local council I know of um, a couple of years ago they they the group there uh, wrote to their local MP, who was a senior cabinet minister, offering to pray for them. And that cabinet minister was battling with how on earth to achieve Brexit. And they were hugely grateful for the group reaching out to pray for them at the challenging time. Um, likewise, uh, within my own organisation, a few months ago, we had a major restructure and there were, uh, we as a group offered to pray for people affected by the restructuring. And this did 
uh, go down quite well. So then you've got to ask, how will the group work with other network groups? And what does the group want from the organization? So working with other diversity networks. So in some ways you may um, look at it and think, what do I as a Christian have in common with the Buddhist network or surely there are going to be issues between ourselves and the um, LGBT network. And yes, these issues do occur, but we are here looking and working towards the common good. And we are here remembering in, a, in this that God loves all of our colleagues, whatever their beliefs, background or anything like that. So uh, one of the key ways, and we define that, is we unconditionally support all workplace colleagues in their right to representation in the workplace, support their right to be treated with an absence from prejudice. We wish to love and befriend all our colleagues whilst maintaining our own specific beliefs. Walking side by side, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, whilst not necessarily seeing eye to eye. So for, you follow from that and you say, OK, uh, we need to approach HR and in some cases present a business case. Now, in some cases, it can be quite easy. In, in the case of Thames Water, where it happened, um, when the company decided to launch diversity groups um, we were in a position that I was just able to contact the relevant manager and say you know we've had a Christian group here for 20 years we want to be involved but other places they will want a business case for why you should do it and a lot of it is the sort of things I've just been discussing how you um, raise morale how you can do bits of what they would call corporate social responsibility, so charity stuff. Um, and just remember in this, be clear and don't use Christian jargon. Speak in terms that the people um, in HR will understand, not the way that people in your church will understand. And again, we can't emphasize too much how important it is to pray through this all. So, um, how do we do this and what from the company's organization uh, side of it do they see as our contribution? How do we tell the company what we're going to do. So this demonstrates um, commitment to uh, the organization and an increased contribution to it and to our colleagues and a commitment to work positively with other networks. And it, it also gives the opportunity to make most of skills and abilities. Uh, as scientists, um, and I'm assuming most of you listening to this will be, um, we can spend a lot of our time in very focused little circles, just looking at our stuff on our lab bench. But it's amazing how well we can develop other skills and abilities when we're given the opportunity to do so. Um, and it's about very much about releasing the potential of the workplace um, and the kingdom, and also about uh, bringing a Christian perspective to ethical standards. Now, I've, I've come across organisations where 
they've done they've uh, the Christian group is very well established and the organization was doing a new advertising campaign and the uh, people there scoping the advertising brought this idea to the um, faith groups and said what do you think about this and the Christian group were in a position to turn around and say you know that's actually going to offend a big chunk of your population um, and they were able to take that away and come back with something that was a whole um, lot better as a result. And yes, as the whole, as said before, bringing your whole self to work in a positive manner. Now, there will be objections. And one of the most common ones you will hear is, why should we support a single faith group? Which um does happen and wouldn't it be better to have a multi-faith group or forum and yes there is a, a valid place for multi-faith group oops i am the co-chair of the multi-faith group as well as being the chair of the christian group and it has a very good place in being able to jointly raise the profile of faith within a workplace and uh, looking to things that are in the common good rather and demonstrating that we are not here just to pursue a single-minded strategy of trying to convert as many colleagues as possible. It's also worth noting on objections that you will come across occasional companies that say we'll have all these other groups, but oh, no, we don't want to go anywhere near religion. And you can see how that some organisations will come across that one because religion can be seen to be a cause of conflict. It shouldn't be, but it could be seen to be. And uh, that one. Um, we have you have to then tactfully go and point out to them that uh, if they have the other networks in place they are legally obliged to give you that space so whilst I could go on and give you loads and loads of stories um, I think I will be drawing this towards a close in a minute, um, just to say that we have seen great blessings in this area. We've seen organisations um, where Christians have come and making a great blessing from uh, praying for their companies, from uh, organising social responsibility, We've had one, um, we had one at the Royal Mail where people, where the Christian group did um, a meal for 600 of their staff there. So these are great opportunities and um, there's great things going on. There, we've got loads of resources if people want them at uh, transformworkuk.org from there you can get a guide to starting a christian workplace group to download and i'm sure we can make these slides available to anybody who wants the links directly um, where there's also worth sharing with um, hr if you're in that position an employer's guide to Christianity in the workplace. And there's also a guide to the legal freedoms we have to speak the gospel message. So all of these are very worthwhile things to look at if you're doing that. And I, don't, I would be very happy to receive um, direct questions on email. And certainly if you've got stuff that applies to your place specifically, that's probably the best way to do it.
and I think that is me more or less finished. So thank you all for listening and I hand back over to Steph. Thank you very much, Dave. Um, I really appreciate hearing that, especially, uh, especially under the circumstances for many of us at the moment. Uh, I think it's a really good space to think about uh, how we might be able to do that now, especially if many of us are working from home, um, but also returning to the workplace, how we could put uh, some of these things in place. So um, if, if, if any of you listening today have had uh, any questions, as Dave said, if they're more specific, they might be good uh, to ask Dave more directly through his email, which he shared earlier. Um, but if uh, you think you have questions that might be more relevant for everyone listening, please get in contact with us on social media because we would love to direct those to Dave and the rest of the panel on uh, Thursday. Um, so I've got a couple more notices just to just to share with you. Um, if you have any examples of this that you would like to share that you think others would love to hear, please send those in as well. So if you have any questions for Thursday, but any stories, testimonies, anything like that, uh, if you can send those in as well, we would love to share those on Friday. Um, and one final thing I want to share with you um, is, or advertise, is tomorrow's session, which is with Cara. Um, she is gonna be speaking with us tomorrow as well and she'll be joining us on the panel on Friday. Uh, so one more thank you uh, for Dave, thank you so much for joining us today and uh, for those listening uh, we would love to see you again tomorrow. Thank you very much, see you tomorrow, bye! <laughs>